Здравствуйте. Reverse engineering is one of the most important fields of computer science. It is applied for binary exploration, malware analysis, game hacking, cryptography, and many more. In this video, I will take you through the different tools and practices to reverse engineering. There are two separate kinds of reverse engineering, static analysis and dynamic analysis. Static analysis is the practice of analyzing a program without running it by checking its file headers or the machine code stored in it. The tools used for static analysis can usually be used no matter if the targeted file is based on another architecture or system. The first tool I suggest for static analysis is Detected Easio, for short DIE. On its own, DIE can do everything one will need for static analysis, though it is not perfect for most of the things, so I will only go through the features that it has that I think are better made than other tools of this type. You can download DIE from the releases of its GitHub repo. When you'll open it, you should see something like this. In order to be able to access the full tool, you'll need to press the advanced button right there. Now it should look like this. Looks a lot more messy, doesn't it? The first thing that is pretty neat about this tool is the gray space there. You can see the various information about the binary such as its compiler, but also sometimes even the securities it employs, packers, obfuscators, etc. You can also view the strings, the imports, the exports, the headers, and even the resources. Another feature I like a lot about the IE is the entropy window. Entropy is a measure of randomness, but that's not the most useful part of this dialog. It is the sections you can see below and the packed indicator, which can hint whether or not the program has been packed even when the IE is unable to identify what packer might have been imported. Employed. DIE is cool, but it is only useful for a very short lapse of the process. In order to analyze the code, a lot of people will recommend IDA, which is a powerful disassembler with the ability to generate pseudocode. Though IDA is not free and comes at a high price. Now I know, I know, a lot of people will say you can crack IDA, but that is illegal my friend and I cannot endorse that behavior. Besides, there were cases of IDA cracks with spirals in them, so I will be careful if I were you. So what I advise using instead is Ghidra, which is a tool of the same kind, but free and made by none other than the NSA. Also, Ghidra is fully open source. In order to use Ghidra, you'll need to install GDK17 and download Ghidra from the releases of its repository. And now to run it, all you will have to do is run the Ghidra run file. But that's for Windows, the process should be very similar for Linux though. The first time you will open Ghidra, it will look like this. Just uncheck the show tips box and click close. Now, in order to start working on a binary file, you will need to press the file tab there and new project. Now, it will look like this select non share project now click next and select a path if you want and a name to your project i'll just call mine test all right now your window should look like this just click on your new project below and the green dragon head now your project should be ready to go. Now we'll need a binary file to begin exploring the features of this tool. I will use a random small executable to do so by drag and dropping it into the window. You can compile one quickly in C++ yourself, but don't take a big program because you might have to wait a long time for Ghidra to analyze it afterwards. After doing so, the window should look like this. Don't change anything and just click OK. Ghidra will just load the binary for a while, so just sit back and wait. When you see this dialog, uh, click yes and then analyze. Alright, we finally have some stuff to play with. Here in the middle you have the disassembler and on the right the decompiler. You can view different sections on the top left and various symbols like the imports, exports, etc. Under the window tab you can explore the various useful tools of Ghidra like the strings window. Ghidra also supports a bunch of useful scripts and plugins for your liking. Now on the other hand, dynamic analysis is done by running and debugging the program targeted. It is important to note that it is system dependent. For Windows, I recommend using x64dbg. You can download it from their website. Now, as it is a debugger depending on the architecture of your binary file, you will need a different version. It comes by default as a build for 32 bits binaries and one for 64 bits. Just open the one you need and drag and drop your binary or click on the top left to attach and select the targeted process. After you have a process, it should look like this. In the middle, you have the disassembler, but this time no pseudocode generation to help you. The registers are on the right, and in this bar you can find all the informations a debugger will need. Breakpoints will list the breakpoints you'll have set, memory map the different binaries in the same virtual address space as your targeted binary, call stack the current call stack, symbols the imports and exports of different binaries loaded with the target, and the others I won't mention as they are less necessary to describe. 
On the bottom left, you have a hex memory dump and on the right, a current stack view. When you right click on the disassembler window, there are a lot of other options which I think are useful to mention. The first useful feature in this menu is the binary button. Options on the red allow you to modify the instructions at runtime, which can be useful to bypass anti-debugging techniques, for example. The copy section has other options than just copying bytes, like copying the RVA or related virtual address, which can then be used as an offset for your shenanigans. You can obviously set breakpoints using the breakpoint section, but also if you haven't noticed, the UI is friendly enough to tell you what the quick keybinds for each one of these actions in the menu. Also, if you suck at assembly, the help on mnemonics option can come in handy, as it gives you a summary on the mnemonics you are viewing. There's also the show mnemonic refs, although this one looks bad and I've never seen anyone use it. Set RIP here can be used to set the current flow of execution without having to double click on the registers in the registers window. Yeah, that's a thing too. Now, the last really useful features of the menu is the search for section. You can select where, for example, the current module, and then what you want to search for, like strings or intermodular calls, which are basically calls to other binaries, aka DLLs. Now, I think the rest is rather intuitive as you learn it as you experiment with the tools, so let's move on. If you want to debug on Linux, there's the GNU debugger, which is great, but I have made a video on how to use it, so just click on the top right corner on the card to do so. It is already the end of this video. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, you can do so too by clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.